Welcome back everybody. Um, been a little while again. Uh, first of all, thank you to all these new subscribers. Thank you very much for logging in and watching my entertaining efforts. Um, hope you enjoy them. You might learn something or you might not learn anything. Uh, I'm learning a lot. <clears throat> uh, the reason it's been quite some time yet again, I caught Covid for the second time. Uh, after Christmas, so I was laid up in bed and I actually spent a short time in hospital. One of the problems of getting old, um, with a heart condition and diabetes, uh, and those two with COVID wasn't good. But anyway, I'm back on the mend now. Uh, still got a bit of a croaky voice, <clears throat> but um, uh, the smell of toast is gone <laughs> burnt toast. Uh, so, anyway, this is just a quick one. This is uh, a gentleman, John Watts, uh, posted and asked a question about, um, in my last video, uh, the Duet 15, uh, I did suggest at the end of the video, I used this crossover, and I said it's a cheap and cheerful mini DSB, it's a 2.4 HD, um, and he posted the question, well, it's low resolution, well it's not actually, uh, it's um, in effect it's CD quality, it runs at f um, 192 kilohertz, 24 bit, uh, it's a cracking piece of engineering really, uh, digital engineering, but I, I, we'll cover that in a second, I'm just going to, just I, the title is, which way do you go, I mean, <clears throat> I have tried over the years, I have made over the years, over 30 years, it must be 20, 25 pairs of speakers built from different designs by different people, and predominantly they all use passive crossovers. This is a passive crossover, this is a two-way, uh, you might have seen this in a previous video, um, and because of John's question... Uh, well, obviously, this is he's suggesting that this is a, a derogatory move, really, compared to these. Um, with the amount of high end kit or the uh, good quality kit front end I have, and amplification. Uh, and I went into uh, after I got over this COVID, this past few weeks, I have done extensive re research just for my own entertainment really um, and I'm just going to pass that on uh, I've tried this is this is an active uh, discrete crossover it's a Nelson Pass design very good um, uh, this just crosses in effect it's just a passive uh, active crossover that crosses it I, I designed this uh, I'll, I'll poke the the um, sheet up on the screen so you can see and it rolls off at 500 and it rolls on at 500 so the base unit rolls off at 500 and the full range this is two-way full range rolls on at 500 this does the same this does exactly the same but passively um this i <coughs> ultimately I, um, i'm not disappointed with it but there's a graininess in the sound quality with this uh, and you can see I've tried different slopes and uh, with components to hit half in and half out. Um, and we, and then I tried this. Let's go back to passive. Very good, very good. Is it as detailed as the active? No, but this seems to be more musical in this setup. So then I thought, well, if that's more musical, um, everybody suggests that a better quality component could be utilised. So there's the two, and you will see different air core. This is um, laminate, 9 millienry. This is an air core for, for the bottom end. Does it make a difference? Oh, yes, it does. It makes a difference. I'll swap these out. Does it make a difference? Yes. These sound different to these M, M caps these are audophilia um, and these these sound completely different to these these are, are grainy a bit harsh 
Um, I'm talking, being very panitiky here. Um, if you if you didn't have these and you were unable to swap these over, you'd be very happy with this. But the fact that I had these in me bin and I'll show you me bin, I've got all sorts. Um, and I swapped them round. You swap them over, and you must do an A to B comparison, like for like, if you see what I mean. Uh, it's pointless messing about. I've got two sets of these um, at my expense, <laughs> uh, and. They all have a sonic signature, and they're all different. This is a Mundorf, and it sounds different to this one here. This this would be in here. I'll swap these over. This is for the um, the clone, the Pap clone. Uh, I'll swap that over. That's what this is. What um, Pure Audio Project use Mundorf. Um, they're Mundorf resistors. Um, Audion. Uh, blah 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 I'm not going to beat on too much about this just, just a little 10 minute video um, but they all sound different this sounds better than this um, these sound better than these these resistors they're okay but they're not as good as these Mundorf or Mills type um, and indeed they're not as good as this and you can go on and on and on but where do you stop uh, i mean it is this is my hobby obsession it's 20 years worth um and you end up with hundreds hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth probably that goes into thousands i've got bins full of components that i've collected over the years used on different speaker designs Oh, I didn't like that. Let's try something else. Um, as you do as a DIY, I, I was one point I was quite prolific, um, but I've stopped being prolific. <laughs> I, do, I do like to listen now, um, so you can see you can really, really get carried away um, uh, and drown yourself in what you. And you can kind of get confused. So it's imperative that you take note. I take notes. Uh, I've got a crib sheet uh, of all the speakers that I've made over the years somewhere it's buried somewhere but ultimately let me come back to this this little device is quite astonishing really um if you buy two of them you could run two four-way speakers you only have one input but you have four outputs and you can change all the slopes all the filters you can do 6 dB, 12 dB, 18, 24, what, 8, 48, uh, whatever, whatever type of slope you want. Um, let's Riley uh, even do those. And it is a one box fits all really. But as I just mentioned, the cost of the passive route, it's okay if you're just doing one speaker. And you have a design and somebody's designed the crossover for you. But if you want to tailor that and upgrade components, it starts getting expensive and complicated. This, of course, you need, if you can run it actively for where you need four amplifiers on each channel. Um, it gets prohibit prohibitively expensive. Um, but I'll just run two. So um, that's fine. Uh <clears throat> so this is just a quick uh this is what I do what I've come up come up come up against over the years and um just might be of interest to see as a DIYer if you're venturing into this where it can get you <laughs> it can get get you in a lot of trouble <laughs> I I mean the the, com the complexities of it the beauties of, of it nowadays there are software packages w which are pretty good um uh will model uh, a speaker and a speaker design and a box and it's not far out it really isn't far out now these these modern ones the the the, the software does seem to sort it out and the, the boffins uh, do a very very good job um so that's just a quick one for now so thank you very much for the question john watts i hope that sort of answered um they all have their four boys four boys um, 
discrepancies if you like none of them are perfect um, but this or a better version of this uh, for me is a wonderful tool uh, and it's a way of getting the best out of uh, any speaker even a single speaker full range unit you can knock out any baffle distraction uh, diffraction uh, and stepping you can just knock it out with this um, as opposed to you would have to put one of those in circuit uh, this was for a I can't remember now um, it was a full range driver uh, most full range drivers have a peak at about 7k 7 8k there's a big spike and this just knocks it flat it's just a notch filter it just knocks it out um, but you put that passively even in an active system you can use this uh, to knock the knock it off bring it back down anyway thanks for watching thanks for all you subscribers uh, there is a ne another one coming up um, which involves um, an amplification which will be interesting interesting for a lot of you I think and what we're going to do is we are going to take in the next video we're going to take a pair of these name amplifier modules out of the name amplifier and replace them with some Avondale SE200 audiophile boards completely differently they look very similar but believe me they're not anyway so that's in the next video coming up thank you very much hope you enjoyed it keep safe keep well be happy